Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Joshua Ratto and your co-host. If you're new to this work, please start with episode 1. Intermediate students should start with episode 98 and advanced students can start with episode 200. With me as always to share her insights and wisdom is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, how are you Josh? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here today. A little bit nervous, but we're going to work right through that, aren't we? Yeah, so uh, you, you're doing great so far. So for, for those of you who are not in the know, <laughs> this is Josh's first episode as co-host. Uh, he has been a, a guest on the show in the past, um, and that is awesome. But uh, this is the first time in the co-host chair, and so we're going to give him a lot of grace today. today. I love a lot of grace. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, so uh, Josh, we've got a bunch of stuff that we had come in over the last week. Uh, we have a new review, and we have a question from a listener. So let's start with the review. You have that over there, right? Yeah, I do. Well, we got something from Indigo Ginger Cat, and uh, she said, I have learned so many things here in such a fun and meaningful way. I just love the energies here. Something very unique and beautiful is going on. Please never stop. You all are such an inspiration and have helped me through such a lot of dark places. And the sincerity is undeniable with every word spoken. Thanks for all you do. So that is, thank you so much, Indigo Ginger Cat. That is, yeah. means a lot. Thank you. That's awesome. And thank you for the support. I don't know if the episode came out yet that I asked for you guys to help with the uh, reviews, but if that is in response to that, I so appreciate it, uh, you know, just even one step up. And if it isn't, I appreciate it even one step up because you did it of your own accord, and I just appreciate you. Thank you for that. Um, we, we love getting reviews here, and it helps us to grow the show. So thanks so much for the, the support. And then, Josh, you had a question from a listener uh to you. Yeah, I do. And uh, this is the question that came and says, Hello, Kelly. I'm still religiously listening to your podcast on Spotify. Thank you so much for that. Loving it all the way here in Australia. I have a question to ask that I'm not sure about, but maybe you touched on, on it in your dreams episode. I always feel like I'm traveling almost every night, visiting new places, holidaying in a sense. Last night was no different. However, I woke up abruptly and felt like my whole head was spinning. I had to close my eyes just to slow it down. And then this morning and all day, I keep getting little bits of vertigo. I wouldn't call it blood pressure or dizziness as it doesn't make me feel ill. It was just so b bizarre. Be good. It would be good if you could cover dreams more extensively in a new episode. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to make a comment that uh, somebody is c touching cables or touching... Uh, the computer, so we want to make sure we don't do that because we get click, 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 click on the other end for the recording. So just try to keep your hands still, and then that way we won't we won't make people crazy on the other end when they listen. <laughs> so okay, um, so yes, yeah, so thank you for the question, and the um, the answer to that is that uh, really what I think is happening is you're actually astrally projecting as you're doing your travels and your dreams. And what's happening is that when you come back, you're not fully making it into your body in this case. So you're not grounding back into your body. You're, you're staying a little bit out of your body. And so you want to uh, make sure that you do some grounding exercises when you get up in the morning so that you can be fully in, in, in your body around that. Um, and uh, a good one, if you, if you are having a hard time grounding, uh, a good one to do would be to take a jelly roll pan. And uh, so jelly roll pan is a cookie sheet with a, a lip, right? And you put tin foil in it, shiny side up, and then put salt on it. I don't care what kind of salt. Pick your salt. I, I use iodized because it's cheap. Uh, but because it's not necessary for it to be anything else. But salt on, on the pan in, you know, a decent... You don't have to like coat the entire pan, but you know, put enough on that, that it feels crunchy under your feet when you step on it, because you're gonna step on it on your bare feet. You're gonna stand on it on your bare feet and that will help you to ground. And so uh, if you cannot ground any other way, that's always a good way to do it because it just does it for you. <laughs> so 
Okay, so that's going to be my best suggestion on that. Uh, and I do not think we covered that in the dreams episodes in either one of the dreams episodes that we did. And uh, so, you know, thanks for asking the question because that's really a, a new one for us to cover. And you've just done a service for everybody who's listening. So you rock. Thank you again for the question. We love questions here and, and ideas for new episodes and things like that. That just makes us happy, okay? So you guys rock for sending it in and for, for uh, rating and subscribing and sharing and all of the things. You guys are awesome. I love you so much. Okay. So with that said, uh, we're going to actually get in quickly into the next... Uh, segment here because we were supposed to have Josh on last week and be able to do sort of an intro of him, but that didn't work out. Uh, oh my god, okay, we're not getting into this because I have to talk about the damn solar flare or the solar, solar, um, the eclipse energy because it feels like Mercury's on freaking steroids in retrograde right now. The technology glitches have been extreme. The communication errors have been challenging. It's everything is harder than it has to be. It's just so crazy. It makes me nuts. Is and this so, why we do the inner work, Kelly? Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, and so, you know, we're just, uh, uh, ah, yeah, it's like that. So uh, I just want to say that, that Mercury retrograde is coming. And by the time this episode comes out, it should be here, I think, because I think we're like a week out or two weeks out at this point. So. Um, Mercury retrograde in eclipse season, buckle up, boys and girls, is going to be a wild ride. This is already a nightmare. So, yeah. If you wanted to do your inner work, this would be the time. Because we're already in Mercury retrograde, which is the best time to start your inner work, right? Uh, we're already in the energy that Mercury retrograde usually holds. And then Mercury's going retrograde. So you want to have like an amplified process that's going to just like shoot you to the moon. This is the time to do it. We, we, uh, I, I have never seen a season like this. And I am, I am fairly certain that shit's going to go kaboom in a good way. So, uh, because that's what Mercury retrograde usually brings along with its frustrations. So, yeah. So I'm cranky. But I'm ready, right? <laughs> <laughs> so buckle up, Buttercup. Here we go. All right. Ah. With that said, um, I have uh, decided that I'm going to start doing some more, like, readings and healings and things like that on the show. And so uh, I reached out to a longtime listener who has been super engaged. And this is, I want to point this out, guys. Nicole has never bought anything from me, and I'm not expecting her to. She is a longtime listener. She has referred people into the, the program. She's referred people into the podcast. She has engaged over and over again on the group. She's sent me ideas for podcasts. She's been super engaged with me as part of this process. And so when I needed somebody to be a guinea pig for this, and I'm like, hey, I'll give you a free reading if you show up, she was like, oh, my God, it's my birthday. That's fantastic. And I was like, <laughs> yes, this is the best thing ever. I did not know it was her birthday, but clearly Spirit knew. And that's why they were like, Nicole, you want to ask Nicole? And I'm like, yes, I do. So happy birthday, Nicole. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. And Josh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you both so okay, much. So. We're thrilled that you're here. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to do a, um, I've been calling them energy scans for a while. We're going to have a new name for them soon. Uh, but it's a, it's an energy scan. Basically, what I'm doing is I am doing an, a scan of your chakra system and your aura, and I am looking at what it is that are what the blocks are that are in the way, and the order in which those blocks should be addressed, if they need to be addressed at all. Okay, so let me explain this. When you do, uh, when when you are doing your internal work, there is a layer of the work that you're working on at any given point in time. And that particular layer of that work has blocks that, keep, that, that you have to work your way through in order to get to the next layer. 
So when you're brand new, when you've just transcended into a new layer, there will be a lot of blocks because it's a whole new layer, right? When you're near the end of a layer and you're about to transcend into the next one, there will be very few blocks. So it's not a report card on your life as to how many blocks are there. It's a indicator of where you are at this level and when the next level is coming or whether you just cleared the next, the, the previous level, right? So please do not take an indication that, you know, a lot of blocks is a problem. It's actually an indication you just transcended a layer, okay? Yeah, so awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Like a report card, right? <laughs> okay, sounds good. And you know what I just remembered? I think right before COVID, I had an energy scan, which I booked through your website, and I actually had it with Kathy. So ah. it's going to be kind of exciting to compare, you know, what a few years and lots of life changes will do to the compared to the last scan. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be fun. We can talk about that too. So um, the... The scan itself is just simply, I'm going to send a tendril of energy out to you. I'm just going to touch into your energy field. So if you have any shields up, please just say Kelly's allowed through so that I can read. And then uh, I'll read your aura first, which will give me an indication of where you are in your life right now. Just sort of, you know, this is how I'm feeling. And just to confirm for the people listening, we did not talk about any of this in advance. We didn't, you didn't tell me anything about yourself. I, all I know is the stuff that you've sent me which is not a lot of personal stuff, if I recall. So um, yes, this yeah. is pretty cold, right? So Yes, that is correct. Okay, and so uh, it will give you an idea of where you are right now, and then I'll jump into each of the chakras individually and tell you what I'm seeing. Uh, are you familiar with the chakra system? Um, so I'm somewhat familiar. Um, probably if you quizzed me on each one, I wouldn't remember each one, but I have a... Uh, good understanding that they're in there and there's different layers and okay. there's specific names for each one. And if you told me the names, I would remember. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell you what chakra it is and I'll probably give you a little bit about what each one's about just in case somebody listening doesn't know either. So, um, Sounds good. Okay. So, uh, when we get, th so if there's an answer to the block, if there's a solution to it, that's a quick one, I will give it to you in the moment. If there isn't, then I will talk to you at the end about what the, the end result is at the end, because some things are too complex for a simple solution, right? So uh, the other thing we'll do is we'll look for common threads or themes that are in uh, your blocks. And usually people have between like one and three themes that cover their blocks. And then we'll also talk about the order of operations for removing them, because sometimes you have a block that is a function of another block and therefore working on that block doesn't actually get you anywhere because when you clear the other one, it'll go away with it, right? So, you know, this, this gives you the opportunity to really be able to see the inter inner landscape in that regard, okay? Any okay. questions about uh, anything? I don't about think about I have scan. any questions about the scan. No, I think I'm good, Kelly. You explained that all so well. Uh, so I I'm, think I'm ready to have fun. Okay, great. So if you yeah. have a question, please interrupt me in the moment. Uh, okay. Know that I am going to be channeling during this, and so my memory is not going to hold information the way that it would if we had a regular conversation. So 15 minutes after this is done, I'm probably not going to remember two-thirds of what I told you because that's just how it works. Um, and so, you know, just ask questions as we go, and I'll give you as much information as I can. And this, by the way, guys, this is going to be a longer episode than usual because these scans take a while. So they take about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the person. So uh, we're going to, and because of that, Nicole, I'm going to ask you to keep story very short. If you, if uh, you know, um, try to just tell me yes or no and ask whatever question you have. Don't go into story because otherwise this episode is going to be like an hour and a half long. Okay. <laughs> okay. You got it. So, so yes and no. And then can I ask a quick question, Kelly? Yeah. yeah. So if, when we get to certain chakras, like I'm thinking about the root chakra, if I grape leaf you, so to speak, like cover, like, yeah. I'm like, no, I don't want you to see that. Like I, like the Adam and Eve with the grape leaf, mm -hmm. you just move on to the next one. Uh, no, I usually ask permission to see it. If okay. You, if you don't let me see it, then that's your option to not let me see it. But, you know, yeah, I just 
normally I'll ask you to let me in. Okay, that makes sense. People don't know that they're rape leaving. So as you're okay. calling it, yeah. So, okay. you know. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, is, yeah. Okay. All right. So any, are we, are we ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. So do I have permission to enter your energy field for the purposes of this reading? Yes, Kelly, you have permission. Okay. Thank you. I'll be right there. You're Give welcome. me a moment. And I'm going to have my eyes closed. If you're watching me on YouTube, you're going to just see me with my eyes closed because that helps me to see better. So, okay. Okay. So the first thing I see as I'm uh, coming up to your energy field is like, there's like all this stuff that is swirling around outside of you. It's, it's like, I'm literally getting the words three ring circus, although it actually looks more like a tornado. Um, does that make sense to you that that's sort of what's surrounding you right now? Yes, that does make sense to me. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, the, is there anything relevant here? Let me just see. Uh, okay. I'm seeing a little kid's rocking horse. Do you have, do you have kids? We don't have kids. So I have a, I have a little kid's rocking horse, like, like the old style wooden ones with the tassels off the sides that you rock on. That's got the, the yarn, um, mane. And so it's, it's an old, it's like from when I was a kid, like seventies. Right. Um, and that's, that's showing up the most. Are you trying to have kids? We are trying not to have kids. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see what this is about. Yeah, this feels like it's part of the, the let me let me just check back into the tornado again. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay. All right. So they're, they're telling me they're, <laughs> so this is one of those things guys that when you're, uh, when you're working with your guides, they will occasionally give you brand new symbols. And this is a brand new symbol for me. And this, I remember I said three ring circus and now they're showing me a, a rocking horse from my childhood. So I have a personal story in my background that is, uh, that my parents took me to a three ring circus and that's how they figured out that I couldn't see is because they would point something t out to me in, in the ring to the right or the ring to the left and go, uh -huh, and I'd go back to the middle. And when it showed up in the middle, I'd be all excited about it. And so that's how they figured out that I was nearsighted. And so I think this is them trying to say there's, there's, um, the energy that is surrounding you right now has a sense of being nearsighted about it that there's a, it's, there's a myop, myopia, right? It's, it's um, like you're not seeing the big picture because you're so busy being surrounded by all of this movement and flurry of activity and things that are flying and your crisis managing, right? And because of the crisis managing, there's a piece that is getting left out because of the freneticness of your being, right? So the, the thing that I, the invitation is to slow down, to uh, not follow the speed of the things around you, but instead make the things around you follow your speed. Okay. Because that will help you to see more clearly the pathway of most efficiency and uh, least pain, <laughs> the most graceful path. That's the word I'm looking for. The most graceful fat path forward. Right now, you're just like getting buffered side to side as you're moving. Uh, and, and there's like, you, there's no, you keep getting bounced off course and having to course correct. And if you slow down, you'll be able to stay on course and not lose so much energy. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense okay. for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Um, okay, so I'm going to come into your aura now because that was just what I saw on the way to your aura. So let's come in. Okay. 
Okay. As I come into your aura, it's almost like I'm swimming. Well, it is like I'm swimming. I'm, I literally, it's like I dove in and I became a fish. So um, it sort of feels like you feel like you're underwater, right? Like it, it's like I'm drowning, right? And it's not that desperate, but it's just like, uh, uh, right? There's just that energy of, of um, it's so interesting because it's both, it, we keep coming back to baby, right? So um, it's, it's both a sense of feeling like you're drowning and also a sense of feeling like you're gestating right? Like you're in the womb and like you're, you're waiting to be born into the, are, are you guys moving or something? It's like you're waiting to be born into the new life, right? Yeah. So we, we actually just moved into our home and we've had a lot of positive life changes. Um, but along with that, um, I think for me, a, a lot of my childhood stuff is all coming up now um, I think because I can process it now, but it's all like the last year, just all at once right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, let me see if there's anything else here. Cause it just, it feels like this sort of pregnant pause, right? Um, it's like you're full, you're drowning a little, you're gestating a little, you're waiting to be born. There's like this, this pregnant pause that's happening here um, in the midst of the insanity around you, right? So it's kind of a combination. So, okay. Um, yeah, so how does that fit into the... All right, so that... Uh, it blends into the t take your own time, right? Um, and it, those go together because, you know, babies come when babies want to come. Right. Not, not on their due date, but when they decide it's time. Right. So it's the same idea, but using it in the outside world. Right. It's that, you know, choosing your path piece that I was talking about before. OK, so let's come into the crown chakra. Crown chakra is your connection to your guides, your connection to the universe, your access to source, all of that. Let me see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm seeing the energy coming into your crown, uh, but I'm not seeing it go back out. So typically our energy comes in down, down the, our body and then back up and out again. Yours does not go back out, which means that you have an energy leak somewhere because otherwise it, you would be overfull, right? And you're not overfull. So there's, uh, I'm going to guess that you've got an energy vampire in your life somewhere uh, or you're giving too much. Um, and you're, you're not allowing yourself uh, a lot of refill, although the crown chakra is open, so you're not in protective mode, so that's good. Um, but the, the crown chakra going out is, is deficient, and therefore the energy is going somewhere else, right? So um, the invitation here is to look at where you're spending your energy and who you're giving it to, and whether you're getting the energy back that you're putting out. Because if, it is, if there's somebody in your life who is just an energy black hole, then you're, you may want to consider whether to offer them more energy. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's look in this chakra and see what we've got. So I've definitely got some mind on overdrive going on here. Um, which is, you know, you got a plan and a backup plan and a backup plan for your backup plan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one isn't actually, well, I mean, it's, it's more complicated in a lot of cases, but a good starter point for this is to say, I have made so many plans in my life that I am now a master planner. And I am not, I don't need to make any more plans because within 30 seconds or less, I will have a plan in place. And you know this because you can make one the moment something goes wrong that you didn't expect, right? And you will have not only a backup plan, but three other backup plans for that because you always have a constant list in your head of all the resources available and all the options available and all the, you know, blah, 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 blah. So you never need to make another plan again because the moment you need it, you'll have it. Okay, so take your planner off duty. You've done your 10,000 hours yes. and mastered the skill, right? Okay. Yeah, I am automatic at that. You are absolutely correct 
Right. Okay, so that'll help with the mind on overdrive. You know, a little meditation would probably not hurt either. Okay? So, um, let me look at the... Let me look here for the next thing here. Hold on. Um, yeah, so you do have some lack of cohesion, uh, which means that you're an untrained channel. So it means you have the ability to channel entities, uh, your guides, uh, you know, it's sort of like um, if you've ever watched Abraham Hicks, right? She's a channel. Mm -hmm. She's an unconscious channel, but she's a channel. There's conscious, semi-conscious, and unconscious channels. So, um, but then we're not talking about channeling today. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but you do have the ability to do that if you decided to. And uh, if you don't want to, you should at the very least learn how to not channel. Uh, a lot of the spiritualist churches around the, uh, the country offer mediumship classes, which also include how to protect yourself. Uh, so, you know, any basic channeling class would be able to teach you how to protect your, your crown chakra so that you don't... If, if you don't know how to say no to something coming in, then you can get possessed. And so this is why I say, you know, learn how to say no, right? Okay. okay. Um, Yeah, no problems with the masculine. You got that down. You, you're heavily identified with your masculine side, uh, the planner side, the structure side, the form, the form and function side, right? So that one's all ready to go, no problem. Um, let me see if there's anything else that they want me to know in the chakra. Hold on. No. Okay. Moving on to the, the sixth chakra. So the sixth chakra is at your third eye. It is your um, transmitter and receiver for your intuition. And so I'm gonna check on that right now. Hold on. Okay, so yours are closed. They are not blocked. They're just closed. And so what that means is that um, you are resistant to using them. Then when I went to use the transmitter, so the transmitter goes out and asks for information and then brings it back. The, the receiver is just there to receive what's available within the, um, the confines of the world around you, right? The energetics of the world. And it picks up on things from your environment and from your surrounding energetic. So when I tried to use your transmitter, when I tested that, uh, what I got was um, this fear of what you would see. Uh, it's not that you're blocked, it's that you're like, I don't know if I want to be able to do that, right? So it's like, mm, maybe not so much for that. The receiver, on the other hand, um, it it's more of a... Mm, this feels less like I don't want to see something and more like I just am generally not open to receive, period. And so it's impacting your intuition receiver, uh, but it's not directly causal because you don't want to see with your intuition. It's a receiving issue. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. So I expect that's going to show up more as we go further along in the journey here, okay? Um, okay. Let me see. Hmm. Okay, so I'm checking on your, so uh, I, should, I should mention, there are 38 common blocks that I look for that I've discovered over doing 3,000 of these. A few, you know, like a decade ago, I did 3,000 of them all at once. And um, I discovered that there were 38 common blocks that every spiritual person that I ran into had some of. Nobody had all of them, but everybody had some of them. And so these are the things that I go looking for specifically, and then I ask for if there's anything else. So, um, so your trust in the universe looks pretty good. Um, it feels like it kind of ebbs and flows, though. It's like, you know, most of the time you're like, yeah, I'm good. And then if something goes wrong, you're like, ah, I don't know. Right. It's, it's that yeah, maybe, maybe not, but I'll get back to it. Cause I want to believe in it, but yeah, but you, you see what I'm saying? 
Does that make sense to you? That Yes, that does make sense. Okay. Yeah. So um, within this is this... Um, so this chakra also holds your willingness to hold your own power, right? And to admit that you are powerful. And oftentimes spiritual people have a problem with this because they were killed for their gifts in a past life or they were too powerful and did damage, right? And so as I'm feeling into this for you, there is definitely a fear of your own power going on here. Um, it also feels like it's tied to the well of rage that has not yet been cleared. And this is pretty common that I see this with spiritual people is that, um, you know, we try to be good people. We try to be loving, we try to be open. And then, you know, we, that means that we don't want to be angry and therefore we don't acknowledge our anger and therefore the well of rage builds and then we blow up and then we feel bad about it. And then we... You know, the whole thing, the whole thing's just a cycle that just continues, right? Um, and so that, you know, either you blow up or you end up depressed. One or the other is the, when you have a well of rage that's not being expressed and not being emptied. And so uh, the reason that that shows up here is because when you are um, trying to own your power, if you have a well of rage that you can't control, you will be, because you are a good person, you will not give yourself access to your full power because you're afraid that when that well of rage goes nuclear, that you're going to take that power and lay waste to the world with it, right? And so that becomes a, 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 a block. It becomes a, a cutoff switch, literally, for you to be able to use your power. And you'll be like, nope, can't have any more than this. Nope, can't have any more. Right. So that, that you're nodding. Yeah. So I think that, that resonates. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely resonates with me. The, the part where, you know, nope, that's all you can have. You can just have this much. Yeah. Yeah. And that's because of the fear of going nuclear and, and laying waste to the world because you have too much power when you get angry. Right. And so the, you know, there's no simple solution to that one because the, the solution is to empty the well of rage, which requires that you, stop taking things the way that you have been taking them and therefore you see things differently and therefore you're not feeding, you know, not adding to the well of rage and then you're giving yourself a way to, to release the well of rage and so that eventually it empties out, right? Um, but that's a, that's a simpler, it's a simple process to explain and not as easy to, to implement. So that's, that's not a quick one that I can hand you in the moment, but that's a general concept, okay? All right. Okay. So let me see if there's anything else in this, um, in this chakra that they want me to see. Hold on. No. Okay. That's everything. Um, for those of you who are watching me on YouTube, if you're looking, if you're seeing me look at the screen, it's because I've actually got my cheat sheet up because <laughs> I don't do a lot of these anymore. Um, I wrote the cheat sheet. <laughs> <laughs> it just helps me remember um, what blocks I'm looking for. So, okay. Uh, okay, so let's let's go into the fifth chakra. Fifth chakra is all about communication and self-expression. So I typically get this one as a physical experience. So I'm just going to tap in. Hold on. Hmm, interesting. You, you remember in the Wizard of Oz where the Tin Man finally got to open his mouth because he had his his, his jaws oiled and he's like, ah, that's the energy that I get as I tap into your self-expression. It's like I, it's like I'm opening a mouth that has been closed for a long time and I'm a, ah, ah, I'm just testing to see how much my my mouth will move and how much room there is to open my mouth and. Uh, I'm kind of stuck on the physicality of it. Let me see if I can get the energy of it. Hold on. So the energy is coming up as well. So it feels like this is really new. It feels like uh, you have gone from a place where you have not spoken your truth and you've done a lot of people pleasing communication and, you know, trying to soothe everything over and not have conflict and things like that. And that now you're starting to open your mouth and say things and that the, the energy is coming out. Some of it's actually coming out of your mouth. A lot of it's building up in your mouth and 
you're just sort of testing, feels like you're trying out speaking your boundaries. Does that, does that resonate for you? That resonates for me. And it's almost like stuck at that mechanical stage where just the feeling, so to speak, of opening it, that, I'm like, wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting as I'm Yeah, at this. exactly. Okay, so let's, let's see what else is going on in here. Um, interesting. Wow, you're having a whole coming out party in this chakra. Okay, so what I'm seeing is that uh, there was this cloak of invisibility, or uh, it's actually, I'm seeing it like a curtain of invisibility that you had been hiding behind, and that you're actually just drawing back that curtain and stepping out to be seen. Um, and that that goes along with the, you know, the manipulation of your jaw and getting your mouth to work and getting, starting to speak your truth and things like that. Um, the, the challenge that you're having is that you have had a ha tendency in that people-pleasing communication, which, by the way, this is a, a inner child thing. People-pleasing communication and dependence and asking for permission, which are two very common blocks, are when your inner child is running the bus, right? And so you end up trying to manipulate through telling people what they want to hear or you know, saying, well, I think maybe this or maybe that. What do you think? And it's, a, it's an asking permission, but it's an enrollment thing, trying to get somebody to agree with you and so you can avoid conflict thing. I'm not seeing the people pleasing communication show up anymore, but I am seeing the pattern for asking somebody's opinion rather than telling them yours uh, and trying to, you know, influence what they say so that they're in agreement with you before you say what's yours, that's still there. And so that's something that you may want to take a look at. And uh, the invitation would be to speak your truth before asking somebody theirs, because that mm. would be good practice for you. Does that make sense? Okay. I love that. That makes perfect sense. Okay. I love that one. Good. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're, you're, uh, there's a block called um, blocked eloquence and fluid thought. Um, and that happens when we are trying to, when we're so worried about what the other person's thinking or saying that we get out of our own heads and we end up trying to figure out what they're thinking, what they're saying, what they think about us, da, 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 and blocks all of the ability to just be fluid in our own beingness. And I feel like your thought is okay on this, but your vocalization is not so great on this. I feel like, again, it's that transition point for you that um, your, your mouth isn't used to working in that way yet. I don't think this is something you need to work on. I think that as you do, as you practice speaking your truth more, this is going to flow all by itself. You know, you don't need to do anything to fix this. It'll fix itself. Okay. That's um, what you just described is such a huge part of my life right now. And I couldn't really, uh, you know, even quite conceptualize like, what is this? And you just really put words to it. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Let me see if there's anything else in this chakra. Nope, that's everything. Okay, coming down to the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra. This is, of course, love, giving, receiving. Uh, and grief, grief can live here. Betrayal can live here. Uh, feeling not lovable. All of these things can live here. So um, let, we're going to take a look. First, I'm going to look for the receiving piece since we found that as a problem in the sixth chakra. So let's take a look and see how you're doing at receiving. Mm, not so great. Yeah. So the, I, I've got a real armored heart here. And uh, so that what happens when we, when we feel too much pain, we start to shove the pain around the heart, not to feel it. And we start to use it as padding to build up underneath the armor that we put on top of it that helps us feel like we don't have to feel our feelings because they hurt too much. And so I'm, you've definitely got an armored heart here. The challenge is that when you have an armored heart, you can't receive love. When you can't receive love, your inner child uh, starts to believe that they don't deserve love. Um, and therefore, you know, we create a self-imposed story of being not lovable. Okay. So 
Uh, you've definitely got your armored heart going on here. You've, uh, so, you, you know, doing some work around de-armoring your heart is, is definitely something I would recommend. Um, and working on receiving is a good choice. I, I love to give people... <laughs> so I have the easy assignment and the hard assignment, okay? Um, which one do you want? <laughs> let's, let's do the hard one. Okay. So the let's hard do assignment it. is to go to the supermarket and get a cart, do your entire weekly shopping, not a small shop, a, your normal shop, and never touch anything in your cart from the moment it comes off the shelf into your cart and onto the conveyor belt, into the bags, going out to the car. Never touch anything in your cart, but ask for help. Ask someone else to put things in your cart. And I don't mean ask one person to go shopping with you and do this because, you know, that's an e that's it's I mean, if that's the most you can do and that feels hard to you, then do that. But the, the advanced version of this is to ask a different person for every place you are, for everything you need. Um, and, and unless somebody says, oh, we'll just do the whole thing with you, right? It's fine. But you need to not touch your cart. This is a practice in receiving. And so, you know, I'm, I'm actually looking at my notes and not at you. I'm going to flip over to the screen so I can see your face because, you know, most people are horrified when I give them this. So, <laughs> you okay? Yeah, that, that would be really tough for me. I'd have to, like, chunk it, maybe, like, just a few people, you know, or just two that I'm like, okay, I, li I think I like this person. I can do it, but I couldn't do it just blindly. Oh, no, no, no. The, the assignment is to do it to random strangers. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the fact is, you're never going to see these people again. What do you care what they think of you, right? So why not ask them for help, right? And asking people, not employees, so customers, not employees. For okay. Help. Okay, just you're in the aisle and somebody walks by and you go, oh, would you get that for me? Okay, and you'll see how people experience their lives based on the response. Because some people will be like, sure, no problem, here you go, you need anything else? And other people are gonna be like, what, are your hands broken, right? <laughs> And it's okay. You just have to recognize that their response doesn't have anything to do with you. It's about how they see the world, right? And so this is a practice in, in a lot of ways to, to do this. And so, you know, it, it's an option for you. The, the easy okay. one is to just walk along the street and receive love from everyone you pass. And if they smile at you, if they hold a door for you, if they let you out in traffic, if, you know, all of the things, right? and to receive that as an act of love. That is an easy assignment, and that's the one that most people try and start with. But if you, if you do it, let me know, because okay. I've given this assignment to many people, and I, I'm not sure anybody's actually done it yet, so we'll see. Okay, um, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the supermarket assignment, I should say. Um, okay, so let me take a look at the rest here. Hold on. Yeah, so you're, the reason you've armored up your heart is because you have um, a, a story that love is transactional. It's like, I'll give you this much love if you give me that much love. Um, and it, it also comes along with, with love comes with an obligation. It's like, ah, you know, I put food on your table. I take care of you. You owe me, right? There's, there's that sort of energy that's there. Then that's what causes people to shut down, right? So, uh, you know, the quick solution there is to say that love is unconditional, and therefore, I can. The reason we shut down the receiving is because we don't want to feel like we owe. And we don't want to feel like we can be manipulated to have to give, right? And so you just have to say, no, I don't have to do anything. You know, if they want to expect, they can expect, but that's not my problem. I'm, I'm going to receive the love that's offered to me, and I'm going to give what I feel like I want to give, not what I'm, what I'm being told I'm obligated to give. That, that, you know, love has to be free-flowing and not demanded, right? And so if you can make that shift, that also helps a lot, okay? All right, let me see. Hold on. Yeah, not seeing grief. Sort of got betrayal in here, a little bit. It's, um, 
It feels like there's someone, it feels like a female in your life who you don't trust. Um, that there is a... Um, Yeah, there's something in there that is um, yeah, that they, they're just they're not trustworthy. Do you you know who I'm talking about? Yes, so I know who you're talking about. It's a relative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah, it felt like somebody you couldn't get rid of. So yeah. <laughs> so yes. I would say yeah, that's yeah. that's how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. Um so the the key is to remember that they are who they are, not who you wish they were. Okay, so long as you can hold what is true for who they are and not expect them to be different, your life gets easier. Okay, no matter what they say, because I, I sense this person says, oh, I'll be, I'll be different, I'll do better, you know, or, you know, they're, they're like, oh, well, that's not who I am, blah, 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 right? There, there might be some gaslighting in there, too. But um, yeah. it, it feels like um, they, they put themselves out as one person, but they are someone else. And as long as you remember that who they are is who they are and don't go into the illusion that they're trying to put out, the glamour that they're putting on, that they're somebody else. As long as you stay in your knowledge of who they actually are, then you will behave in a way that is uh, much healthier and much safer for you when you're around them. Okay? Okay, that was that's really important for yeah. me to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, you want to believe who people want themselves to believe because you're a good person and you... You want to be kind and you want to support their vision. This person is not, they don't have a vision. They have a glamour. And the glamour is the mask that they wear that they want people to believe about themselves. They're not trying to live into it. They're trying to make you believe it in spite of their actions. Okay, so that's yeah. the difference. Yeah. Okay, so okay. don't buy the delusion. Know what's true and operate accordingly. And don't allow them to bully you into crossing the boundaries that you're setting because I feel like that's something that's, that happens too. Yeah, that happens and that's really that's really greatly helpful to hear. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. does not need an explanation. Okay? Any explanation you put behind no is giving them opportunity to talk you out of your no. Okay. Okay. So oh, that's well said. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So you don't yeah. need to explain why it's a no. You just need to say no. Okay, that's really important. Okay. Yeah, and if they're yeah. like, well, why? It's like, I don't need a why. It's just a no. Well, you need to, a no? I don't have to tell you why. I don't have to justify my no. I'm a no. Find somebody else. Right? Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, uh, anything else in this chakra? Let me see. No. Okay, that's everything. We're coming down into the third chakra. So the third chakra is your will center, your power center. It's the place where your inner child lives. It's the place where your identity lives. Uh, and uh, where if you're using glamours, that's where that will show up. So uh, let's start with your inner child. Let's see what's going on with her. Hold on. Okay, so I, she's skipping. She's skipping through the halls. She's wearing, um, you know, a little little dress and some pretty. They're not patent leather shoes, but they're 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 they look like patent leather without the shiny, right? Um, mm -hmm. And she is. I keep seeing her pulling um, the heads off of daisies. Uh, so I, I, that's you know, she's just like skipping along and grabbing the daisies in her hand as she's going by them and just popping the heads off as she's going. I mean, she's not trying to be destructive. She's just like, we look, it's all the flowers. I'm grabbing all the flowers, right? It's, it's that sort of energy. Um, and uh, she seems pretty happy. So that's, that's good. That means you've got a relationship with her. It means that, you know, she's feeling like she's safe and held. And so that's big bonus for you. So well done. 
Um, uh, I you. can't tell you how many times I find inner children in dungeons and dirty, dingy, you know, filthy clothes that are torn and whatever. And, you know, yours is well-dressed. She is clean. She is happy. She is skipping. She's having a good time ripping the heads off of daisies. So Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what it is about daisies in particular. You may want to look up the, the meaning of daisies and, and see if they have okay. any sort of Im implication in your life. But it is definitely daisies. And they were very specific about that. So that generally has a, re a reason. Uh, I don't have anything in my lexicon about daisies. So it's got to be something that for you. Okay. Okay. Right. Interesting. Um, I'll have to think about that. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at the identity. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the, um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Rampart? I don't know. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's like a little wall that, that when you're under fire in a war, they, they, there's a wall you're hiding behind to keep yourself from getting hit by the bullets, right? Um, I, I'm seeing you standing up from that wall that you've been hiding behind to be seen. And it's not a, in, in this case, it's not like I'm seeing people firing guns at you or anything. I'm not seeing that. But the, the wall that you were standing behind had that energy about it. Like it was the defensive position for, for being under attack, right? And so you're standing up from that, which says to me that you're coming out of a hypervigilance space um, that, that that's starting to fall away and that you're now standing more solidly in yourself and your willingness to be seen regardless of the consequences. And so that actually reflects back to the throat chakra in a lot of ways with how, how you're being there. Um, and so, you know, this, this is a very encouraging thing that I'm seeing. So it's an indication of the new state of being for you. Okay. Um, okay. okay, and then let's go in to see the, so uh, when you're in the power center, you also find things that you, the stories you tell yourself to rob yourself of your power, right? So I'm going to go looking for those right now. Hold on. Yeah, so you've definitely got some not welcome, not wanted, not important energy in here. Um, it's the, you know, uh, I'm not wanted here. I, you know, I've never felt at home. I've, uh, I just feel like I'm not important to anybody. And in fact, I'm a bother, right? Um, I'm a burden. Burden is the word, right? So that is part of the, uh, the stories that you're telling yourself to keep yourself out of your power that we were talking about in the mm -hmm. sixth chakra, right? Okay. Yep. Um, what else do we have? Hold on. Yeah, okay, so we got some too big, too much in here, too. It's like, you know, oh, you're so much. Oh, you're so dramatic. Oh, you're so, you require so much attention. What is your problem? Why do you need so much attention? Sort of that energy. Um, mm -hmm. Does that, that resonate for you? It, it does, yeah, yeah, it does. It feels very yeah. young. This feels like it's from childhood, like, you know, between two and five is where this sort of got in, entrenched for you. It doesn't feel like that's what you're getting from people now, but that it was what you got in your childhood and that somehow it's still ingrained in you. Yes, yeah, I definitely feel that in that age is you're exactly right about that age and that feeling. Okay, yeah, so um, this one is, is um, just about not caring. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, I'm bothering you? Oh, well, too bad. <laughs> guess you'll have to find someplace else to be right this one's just about not caring and and you know being like I have I, I have the right to take up my space right okay, okay I like that that's a simple solution it's but it's really important yeah yeah so okay um all right let's see okay so there is some not good enough going on here and I I gotta tell you I I can't remember the last time I read somebody who didn't have this one uh it is the most common block i find in everyone everywhere uh so the not good enough and you know part of that is just because we're we're told that we, well we, we were surrounded by people who constantly found fault right 
So when you're surrounded by somebody who constantly finds fault, it's very easy to feel like you can never be good enough no matter how hard you try. So um, this is a common one. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is just about really acknowledging how good you are. Right? That's, that's the balance. The average American child receives 432 negative messages for every three positive messages per day. Okay? So big surprise, we internalize that and beat the living crap yeah. out of ourselves, right? So this is about balancing the scales and finding good things about yourself to balance out the bad, okay? Because everybody's got good and bad, and we just beat hard on the bad, and therefore we feel like crap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you've, you've definitely got some martyr syndrome going on too. It's like, I'll kill myself to make you better. <laughs> It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, stop that, okay? Everybody else is perfectly capable of running their own lives. They're competent humans, and, and uh, you don't need to kill yourself to make anybody else better. You know, in fact, you should not ever do that. You should only give from your overflow, not your emptiness. Okay? Yeah, that's, that's another really important one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then... Um, Last one, you know, we talked about the not lovable one, which is coming out of the feeling. I feel like, you know, I feel like this is here, the not lovable one, because of the the, uh, the armored heart. But I don't feel like it's absolute. I see in a lot of people, I feel like there's there are these absolutes of, oh, I can't possibly be lovable, blah, 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 blah. And for you, it feels like, yeah, I'm not feeling any love. Therefore, that could be a problem. But not sure I believe it, right? There's a, I'm not sure I believe it. That's super healthy for you in there. And I, <laughs> I would encourage you to encourage that thought because it okay. is a self-fulfilling prophecy that's a function of the armored heart, not a function of there not being love around you. And I'll tell you a secret. The love that, is being, that has been offered to you your entire life that you have not received never leaves your energy field. It is always there for you to go back and receive anytime you're ready to do it. And so you are loved. There's a lot of love in your energy field. You just have to get to yourself to the point where you can re open up to receive it. Okay? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah. let me come down on the second chakra. So second chakra is the sexual center. It's the creativity center. It's fertility. It's It's where uh, addictions and attachments live. It is uh, a rich and varied space. So I'm gonna go in and take a look. Uh, bear with me. Okay. okay. So shame lives in this chakra too. It does not always relate to sexuality the, with the shame, um, although sometimes it can. Um, I do have some shame that's showing up in this chakra for you. It is, um, it feels really generalized. It doesn't feel like it's focused on something in particular. It just feels like it's a, it actually feels like it's related to um, the too big, too much. Uh, it feels okay. like there's a shaming that happened around that. Um, and so that's, you know, again, this is the same thing as the too big, too much. It's like, that sounds like a personal problem, right? Because shame is externalized judgment, internalized. And so somebody oh, else judges yep. you and you internalize that and feel shame about it. That is what shame is. And so if you just ignore the judgment and you're like, I'm not receiving that, I refuse, then shame goes away. Same thing with guilt, okay. right? Um, when it's externally imposed. Uh, guilt internally imposed is a different issue, but... Um, like externally imposed guilt is, is the same, same solution for that. Okay. So, okay. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So you do have a little creativity that's been stolen by the mind, right? So it's, uh, you know, the position of creativity is supposed to be in the second chakra, but you've sort of pulled it up into your head. So you think about all your creations instead of uh, operating from the second chakra where they're, they're naturally coming from. 
Um, and that's part of the mind on overdrive, overthinking. You know, uh, we, we get into these manipulative planning, extra planning, whatever things, because we think it keeps us safe. And then we, you know, take that with us into our creative space, and then we end up thinking our stuff to death, right? So uh, my invitation to you would be to come back into your inner child, because okay. creativity is the ballywick of the inner child first. And so if you come back into your inner child and you engage in play, I love finger paints for this. Body paints are great for this, you know, things where you're just, uh, you're not using a brush. So there's no, there's no ability to be precise, right? Cause we're trying to get out of our precision brain thing and we're not thinking about what we're making. We're just going and going, Ooh, this color is pretty. Where do I want to put it? I want to put it there. Where do I want to put that color? Ooh, I want to paint my face with this one. I want to paint my arm with that one, you know, and just to play with it and, and be with it. Uh, and that will help you to bring your creativity back into your second chakra. Okay. Okay. That makes right. sense. So, uh, let me see here. Yeah. Okay. So I've got some blocked passions in here too. And this, this doesn't feel sexual in nature. It feels passionate in nature. Like I'm passionate about doing this thing. Um, and so the, the passions for you in this case are about, um, or the block for you in this case is about deservingness. You have a thing around deserving and I, I'm, I don't deserve to have this passion. I'm not good enough. I'm not, I don't work hard enough. I, I haven't paid my dues enough. I, you know, whatever it is, the story is that you're going to tell yourself about it. There's like this, I can't have it. Right. Um, and that's where the blocked passions are coming in for you. Uh, if your passions are blocked and you don't uh, believe you deserve it, then you will never find true joy because you won't give yourself permission to have it. And so this one's important to really uh, work on and to recognize that deserving is a, it's a made up concept. Deserving is somebody else telling you whether or not you're good enough to have something. It is a manipulation. The entire concept of deserving is a manipulation. We are all infinite creatures. We are all infinitely creative. We are all the divine and we all deserve everything. And so when you recognize that deserving is a term that's been used to manipulate you into being smaller than what you are, into being less than what you are, into settling for less than what you deserve, than what you should have, then, then you will recognize and be pissed, ideally, be pissed that this has been put upon you and then no longer allow it as part of your life. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, okay. I do feel some attachments for you. I feel like there's this like grasping going on that you, you get, um, what, what is it that, what's the attachment to? Hold on. Um, feels like it used to be around people, but now it's become about something else. Uh, let me see what that is. Um, interesting because it's so ephemeral there's like this mm. grasping on this like reaching out and trying to grab and hold on to these things that are coming and going so quickly in your life right now it feels like there's um it, it's what i'm seeing is a metaphor for control right it's it's like you're trying to control things and you're grabbing onto them and they're melting out of your hands and you're going oh, well that didn't work Right? And, and, and yet you reach out with another one and try and grab on and again and try and grab on again and they all melt away before you can actually do anything with them. And there's this sense of feeling helpless around it, but still trying anyway. Does that make sense to you? Okay. That does, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to say is stop trying. Okay. Okay. The, the universe is trying to teach you surrender right now. And so, you know, you're, think of it this way. Every time you try to control, you, the, the universe has got you in a boat on the river. 
and the river's going in one direction. And every time you try and control, you pick up a paddle and you try to paddle upstream and you keep ending up further downstream, right? Stop trying to paddle upstream. The universe has got you on a course. It is taking you in a direction. Let it go. If you don't like that you're heading for a rock, put the paddle in the back and use it as a rudder to go around the rock. Do not paddle upstream. Okay? See the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see the difference. Yeah. yeah. It, but again, this is the going back to trusting the universe that we were talking about up in the sixth chakra, right? Because that's mm -hmm. the, when you're trusting the universe, you're fine. You're inside. You got the or the paddle inside. You're good. You, and, and you're good to go. And then you see a rock coming and you start to not trust the universe and you start paddling upstream, right? And it's like, no, you, there's a rock. There's an oar in the boat for a reason, right? Stick it in the water and go around. You're okay, right? But you, you see the rock and go, oh, I'm going to die. It, you know, there's that thing. And then that's when the, the trust the universe goes up and down, right? Does that make sense? It does. That does make sense. Yeah. All right. Okay. So um, let's go down. Let me see if there's anything else in here first. Hold on. No. Okay. So let's come down into the root chakra where you had already said you were going to fig leaf me. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see. No, I think we're okay. Feels feels like we're okay. Let's see. Uh, root chakra. Okay. I got good grounding going down. Good grounding somewhat coming up. Not perfectly. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so you've got energy coming in from the crown and not going out the crown. You have energy coming out the root, but not coming in the root. So um, it, it, you're, you're passing energy in one direction through you and not... So all of it's um, universal source to earth, none of it's earth to universal source. Um, now, I'm not surprised that that's the case because you said you had just moved. What happens when we move is we pull our roots up out of the ground so that we can move. And then we, it takes us some time to root back in. So I think this will probably work itself out on its own as you get settled into your house. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So let's see here. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of fears around safety and security. You look pretty good there. Let's look at the tableau. Okay, so as I'm looking at your family tableau, I always see this in a kitchen for some reason. Um, and it's always your nuclear family. It's not, it's not your partner or your kids. It's, it's your parents and your siblings, if any, right? And so um, I am, what I'm seeing is a, your dad standing way in the corner of the kitchen and just being still and doing nothing. And mm -hmm. I'm seeing your mom being up and running around the kitchen and being very efficient and very structured and very, you know, like, da -da 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 -da, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing the other thing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I see you and a sister. You have a sister? Yes, sister. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing you and your sister, and it's kind of like you guys are just, like, waiting for the freneticness of mom to calm because there's no point in doing anything until it does, right? Um, yep. And, and that there's just sort of this – and I see you guys on the same side of the room, uh, so on the opposite side of the room than dad, uh, so really as far away from dad as you can get in, in still being in this room. Um, and uh and mom is like like there's a so dad's over here and there's a kitchen table sort of a third of the way into the room from dad's side and mom is going back and forth between you and your sister in the kitchen table and it's basically ignoring dad altogether too so it's like dad really he's there but he's not there he's there but he's not there, yes right? yeah and your your sister and you are on the other side of the room you're a little bit apart you're not like far apart from each other. So I don't think you're estranged, but it doesn't feel like you're super close either. Um, and so it feels like there's connection, but not, you know, like 
super heavy affection sort of thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I That would describe my relationship with her. Okay, all right. So, um, you know, this is just saying that mom is a dominant force in your life um, and uh, or has been and um, that there is... Uh, she takes up a lot of oxygen in the room. You know, there's in the too big, too much category, right? She's, mm-hmm. she's the biggest category, right? Does that make sense? It does. Yes, that okay. does make right. sense. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So let's uh, look at the connection to friends now. Um, and I want to be clear when I talk about these um the, the family dynamics, that it's very much your impression of the family dynamics. It may be mm-hmm. a very different experience if I was reading, say, your mom or your sister or your father or whatever, right? Because they would have a different experience of the dynamics, and therefore the, the dynamics may not show up the same, okay? Okay, okay. that makes so, sense. Um, okay, connection to friends. Let's look at that. Okay. So uh, I feel like there's, I feel like you don't have many friends who are physically close to you. Um, Because what I'm, actually I'm seeing one person tethered to you. And I I say tethered because it's like there's actually a rope or a, you know, something, some sort of thing that's tying you together. Um, Mm -hmm. And, uh, so if they feel like they're further away, um, and I don't really see a lot else. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's just okay. that one connection. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So you know the the thing here is um, the tether. What is up with this tether? I've never seen anybody tethered to somebody in this way. Um, let me just see what's going on with this. Um, so the tether feels like it's comforting to the two of you. It's like, yes, we're tied together. We, we go everywhere together. We're never apart, you know, not, you know, energetically never apart sort of thing. Um, but it also feels very restrictive. Um, it feels like there is a, uh, sort of like an ownership quality that comes with it from, uh, at least from your friend's side. That, that mm-hmm. it's like, you're, you're my one and only sort of thing. It's like, you're my BFF and nobody else gets to play sort of thing. There's, there's eh, just a little bit of possessiveness in this thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. I would just be careful with that because, you know, if the fact that you're allowing it in your energy field and it shows up so strongly is that it, it may prevent you from being able to make other friend connections uh, unless okay. you change the nature of that. Okay. Let me see the manifestation bubble here. Give me a second. Okay, so your manifestation bubble is stopping at your second chakra. Again, it's going back to that deserving piece. So every time you're trying to manifest something better for yourself, something good, Mm -hmm. you're running into the deserving piece and it's busting the bubble. Okay, so you okay. want to make sure that you really address that deserving piece so that your manifestation can move up. Let me see if we remove that. Let me see what that looks like. Yeah, there's still a little eh in the not good enough in the third chakra. And if we clear that. Yeah, now we run into the receiving. So, so your problem with your manifesting is that you've got each of these blocks working its way up. Okay. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Once we hit fifth chakra, that feels like it opens up. And then it, it, whether it makes it through the sixth chakra depends on whether or not it impacts, it, whether or not it's impacted by your willingness to hold your power. Um, okay. Because if it isn't, then you're fine. If it is, then, then you still got to deal with that first. Okay? okay. So that's, if you're having troubles with manifestation, that's why. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let me see if there's anything else. Hold on. Yeah. So your fe- your feminine 
energy, which is in the root chakra here, is um, it's not blocked. It's just underdeveloped, right? You, you've, you've highly identified with your masculine side, which is not surprising given the energy that your mother is operating in. That was your model um, because it's very masculine energy that she's, she's doing. She's very efficient, very structured. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a very masculine energy and you've identified with that, uh, but there's no feminine energy to balance it out. Does that make sense? Um, it, yes, that does make sense. Yeah. So yeah. the feminine side is a beingness state. It's not a doingness state. Oh, and so okay. that means, uh, that you are, it's a much slower state because it's an embodied state. And so you cannot be in your feminine and not be in your body. Those are mutually exclusive. The, those, those have to operate together, that's what I'm saying. Is, um, you must be in your body to be in your feminine. And oh, that's interesting. The, that slows you down because being in your body is slower than being in spirit or your head or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And so it is a much more languid, you know, flowy uh, beingness state. And it is connected and content with its its beingness it is with everything so it is out of judgment because judgment's in the head it's in experience so when people step into their feminine for the first time you know the feminine is in the darkness it's the great mystery right and so they go stepping into the darkness and they try to find the light switch to turn it on to understand it and you can't understand the feminine. You have to experience it. That's the difference. Okay? So I would highly recommend, you know, working on, um, well, working on as a masculine state. Uh, I would highly recommend being with yourself and being with your experiences and not judging them and not, uh, not trying to make them different, but holding them with compassion. Okay? Okay. And then um, the other thing is ask for help more. That's, okay. that's another thing is that you have a tendency to like, be like, I can do that. 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 I can do just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Okay. Um, when you don't ask for help, you don't give other people a way to have a role in your life. Okay. It okay. is an unwelcoming thing when you ask for help. And I would say, ask early, ask often. Ask for help on things you don't need help for, but you just want help for. Okay. Okay? Because when you ask a lot and you hear no a lot, it doesn't really matter because you heard yes some. And so okay. you never get to the point where you're so empty that you have to require that somebody does something for you, right? It's you're always in a state where you're getting a little bit of fill, a little bit of fill the whole time, and so you're never getting empty. So you need okay, to start asking that makes for help sense. more often. Okay. Yeah. And saying no more. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes. yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna sort of wrap everything up. Let me make sure there's nothing else in the chakra before I finish that one. That they want you to know. Nope. Okay, so we're going to wrap up. Uh, so the theme here, obviously, is you're in evolution. And you are stepping into uh, being yourself at a level that you have not been in the past. And that that is having implications in your identity. And that it's also bringing up things for you to clear now. Because you are stepping into that new way of being. And so all the things that were in holding on to the old way of being are, are showing up to be cleared. And so that's always an indication that you're doing good work. Is when lots of things show up, right? Um, and, and it's breakdown before breakthrough. So just remember that. Um, the, the big themes that I see are uh, receiving mm -hmm. and, and opening to receive uh, as well okay. as stepping into your power and your um, your your full authentic beingness sort of thing right that's that's the other theme right so I kind of told you where I felt like things were functions of other things so I don't feel like I need to do that but um, the 
first thing, first order, let's see. Well, you're already working on the identity piece, which is going to be changing the, the, a lot of the stuff that's going on. I kind of feel like I don't want to tell you to work on something more specific because the identity piece that you're working on right now is so big that it's actually going to go and influence a whole lot of the stuff that we just read, and it's going to shift a lot of stuff of its own accord. If there's okay. one thing that I would say to work on, it would be the opening the heart. Because that's oh, the, okay. Yeah, that's the receiving piece, okay? Okay. Um, everything else I don't want you to really focus on right now because of the identity shift, because you want to get through that identity shift. You don't want to short circuit it by trying to a a attach to anything else, right? So you don't want to refocus what you're doing. You want to stay with what you're doing. I think that the... Um, the de-armoring of your heart would be good for you uh, alongside of this identity shift because uh, it'll help you shift into knowing that you are loved and that can become part of the new identity, right? So that's the only reason why I would tell you to do that simultaneous to this is because, you know, it, it is an identity shift at a core level uh, doing the, uh, okay. the de-armoring. Okay. So do okay. you have any questions? I don't think I have any questions. Um, it's It feels to me like, you know, when something is at the core level and you're processing what feels like so much, it's, it's like, gosh, am I ever going to get through this? Or I'm going backwards. Or gosh, I'm just not handled, like I could have handled this in my 20s way better than what I'm doing now. So it just feels like, it's a lot to get through. And, you know, I, I think, though, that, you know, I will make make the changes that I want to. It's just it feels like a lot. But I think that's just part of like walking through it and being in the middle of the tornado, so to yeah. speak. Well, and you would not have done this better in your 20s. You would have thought no. you would have done it better in your 20s. You would have convinced exactly. yourself you had done it better, but you would have actually done a pretty crap job of it. Because yeah, exactly. you know, in your twenties you weren't in this space. The 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 vision that I see is someone who is powerfully moving through a process and like kicking ass doing it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it will eventually subside. Um, and you are kicking ass. You are not like going backwards by any stretch of the imagination. Things are coming it's, up from the past to be cleared, mm -hmm. but that's not going backwards. That's actually releasing things that have been holding you back. And think of it this way. Think of all the, the emotions and the traumas and things that you haven't dealt with from your past as rocks in a backpack. And it, every time you open that backpack and you take a rock out and you're like, okay, I'm going to look at this rock and I'm going to be with this rock and I'm going to deal with this rock. And when I've processed this rock, I'm going to put it down. My backpack is now lighter. Do, am I mm -hmm. looking at something from the past? Yes. But my backpack is lighter when I'm done. Okay? So I want you to think of it that way because I feel like because it's from the past, you feel like you're going backwards. And that's not the case. Yeah. Okay. That, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good, Kelly. You brought up, a, like, there were some huge points for me that I knew they were going to come up. But just the way that you described them for me, I was like, oh, that's that's perfect. That's what I've been trying to sift through. So I kind of got that clarification that I knew what I, you know, that I, I needed that, but I didn't know like how to exactly see it and then address it. Awesome. So thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. So good birthday yeah. present. Oh, it, uh, amazing birthday present. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta love how the universe just lines things up like that, don't you? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's amazing. So, okay. So, uh, wrap up for the day. And I'm going to just pull myself back from your energy field. And you can go ahead okay. and remove permission for me to be in your field. Because that should not continue. So that you are sacrosanct. Um, and I'm going to pull myself back into myself and ground. And here we go. Okay. So. Welcome back. Kellyism. Kellyism for the day. Uh, let's say uh, we're gonna say, "Let the love in." I like that one. 
Let love the love in. There's, there's that's all beautiful. the love that's ever been given to you, waiting for your, your waiting for you in your field. Let it in. Let it in. Okay. All right. All right. And with that, I think we are wrapped up. If uh, I, I'm going to tell you that if you are uh, out there and you are going to write me a review, uh, okay. I will be looking at the people who write reviews uh, in the coming months, and I will pick my next guest for a energy scan or a psychic read or a business, you know, a business consulting uh, psych intuitive session. Um, uh, I will be picking that from my people who are doing reviews. So uh, if you would like to put up a review, then consider it as an application to be reached out to and make sure that you also send me a note somewhere, whether you send it to Kelly at kellysparta.com or you put it in um, the Spirit Trip of by Kelly Sparta Facebook group or you reach out to me on Messenger. There's so many ways to reach me. But make sure that you send me some way to contact you because uh, the, the ways that people put up reviews do not allow me to contact the person. Um, so make sure you said, hey, this was my review. Hey, this was my review. And then that way you can link to it. And that way I'll put you on the, the list for people who could win a session with me when I do this again. Okay? Awesome. So, Josh, take us home. All right. That's all we have for this week, folks. Uh, tune in next time. Well, Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Joshua Radwin here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. And Bye. <laughs> all right. We're going to hit stop.